everyone, and welcome to Cloud Wars Live, where we explore today's digital revolution by speaking with the business executives and thought leaders who are changing how the world lives, works, plays, learns, and dreams. Our guest today is Arpan Shah, General Manager for Azure Infrastructure Marketing. Arpan, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Bob. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And this is the first episode that we've done in our Cloud Wars Top 10 Executive Insights Program, where we look at the top 10 cloud vendors in the world and their unique strategies, how they're working with customers and helping the whole global economy move forward into the digital world. So Arpan, first thing I'd love to hear about is as you engage with customers and the team does, what are you hearing from them about their sense of expectations about the cloud, some of the outcomes that are being delivered, and where they see that helping their business move into the future? Yeah, so um, it's been great to be in this space. And over the last two years, uh, we've just seen a lot of customers actually move to the cloud. I mean, I think at some point a few years ago, people were asking, why should I move to the cloud? Now every conversation I have is, how do I move to the cloud? So really the, the conversation's changing. And at Microsoft, uh, over 95% of Fortune 500 are on Microsoft's cloud, so that's awesome to see. And the types of things that we see customers looking for are um, how they can actually really gain real business value. So for example, some people want to optimize their current infrastructure. So they're looking to cut costs or improve operations or scale or get better security management. And some of those customers, for example, will look at big um, mission critical workloads like SAP. So Daimler, for example, it has their entire SAP procurement system on Azure. And so they're able to power their procurement processes with over 400,000 global suppliers. And they're actually able to reduce costs as well by 40%. Then customers also not looking at just optimization, but also innovation. And so there's some big trends, as, as I'm sure you know, Bob, around IoT, analytics, and AI, where people really want better tools to understand their business, want to create new business models and create new products. And that's where the cloud can help them. And so we have customers like Starbucks and Chevron and Walmart and Walgreens and BMW that are actually looking at Azure to help them transform. And so just some great outcomes um, all around, all from optimization to innovation. So some really good things we're seeing happening um, around the globe. Arpan, I know that each of those categories, you know, optimization and innovation are important. Are you seeing a, a, a pickup more on the innovation side? Are, are more companies getting past the point where they've sort of got the cost issue under control? Now they really want to dive into where they need to be in the future. Uh, we're seeing both. We're seeing both. And I think there was, I think there's this uh, misperception that some companies only do optimization or some companies do innovation. The reality is they do both. And different groups may do both or they'll have different projects targeted at different outcomes. And so we're definitely seeing companies do different things. But on the innovation side, we're seeing some really interesting things. Um, I just uh, got to talk to eSmart Systems, for example, and they're doing some really interesting things around using drones to, de to detect power grid systems. And so by flying drones around, they're able to look at the power grids, find out where there could be anomalies, and they use image recognition to find that out. And there it saves them costs by really using innovation. And so there's some phenomenal examples where companies are doing both. Yeah, that sounds great. And I also wonder, um, Arpan, do you see up and down the line across those? And in some ways, uh, the, the term digital transformation in some ways you hear it everywhere and in some ways you know it's become the term has become a little bit of a cliche but the concept of it just seems to be overwhelming it's something that satya talks about you know in a very powerful ways and when he's up with some of these you know the ceos of the largest companies in the world that say this is the way we need to jump into the future here so it's is it something that you're finding across industries across regions of the world everybody's yeah. in the yeah, no, absolutely. And, and the way I like to think about it when I talk to um, CXOs is that almost every company out there is, is a software company now in some ways, or they're a technology company. And so instead of just having a conversation around how do I improve operations, the conversation has become how do I make software deliver a better experience for my customers? How do I deliver better services through software? So that's the type of 
really fascinating digital transformation we're seeing companies undergo. And there's a lot of inspiration out there today, right? I mean, whether it's Tesla or Airbnb or, or just kind of autonomous driving all up. And we have a lot of customers, um, a lot of auto customers that are using Azure, for, for example, autonomous drivings. So tons of, um, tons of inspiration out there, but it's really about how do you fundamentally change the way you deliver your product and how do you change your business model to really meet the needs that people are looking for today? Yeah, I think what you just said there, Arpan, is, is so important today, right? Because for a long time, companies, for a variety of reasons, when they think about their strategy, it was, okay, here's what I do, here's what I make, here's the channels I use, here's how I sell. And it seems like today what companies have had to do is say, what is it that the market wants? Right. What are the terms of going to market that they're demanding? And how do I need to change everything I do to adapt to what customers' rising expectations are. Absolutely, customers and also uh, competitors. <laughs> um, so you, you, you find that a lot where a lot of companies will come to Microsoft and say, look, I wanna do this really cool innovative thing because my customers are asking or I believe it's a next wave or there may be a set of customers or departments and customers that are saying, wow, I have some competitive threats and so I need to be able to compete. So both spectrums, but they're both grounded by making sure that they're delivering better products, to better services, all in a, in a digital way. Yeah, you know, along those lines, as you bring up the competitors, um, we, we spoke a couple of weeks ago with the CIO of uh, Guardian Life Insurance. Hmm. And it's a, a company that was founded in 1860. Wow. And he said, you know, in this digital world, he said, we don't think about uh, our other life insurance companies, our primary competitors. He said, we've got to think about our consumers last digital experience. That's our competition. Now we got to be as good as everything out there. So for some of these companies you're describing, Arpen, it's not something maybe they're accustomed to so much focus on the customer experience, but going forward, that's really how business is going to be done, right? Um, yeah, and absolutely. And I think Microsoft in many ways um, really understands that in a unique way. We've had, you know, decades of experience working with enterprises. So we really want to help customers through this transformation, whether it's through technology or it's through deep partnership, really understanding their business needs and helping them through that. And so one good example is a hybrid. We're finding a lot of customers have existing assets, have existing skills that they're really proud of and are, are the bedrock of their business. And while they want to innovate and while they want to move to the cloud, you don't want to just drop all your innovation or drop all your um, history or all the, all the stuff you've done over the years. And so by really believing in hybrid and delivering a hybrid, we're able to help customers move to cloud um, in a way that makes sense for their business. And we give them many different options so they can use their existing skills, use their existing assets and comply with other business priorities they may have. So they may have compliance needs or latency needs or security uh, needs. And so we're able to do that. And I think we're uniquely positioned to be able to deliver that type of hybrid uh, platform that customers are looking for. But you know, Arpan, what you're describing there with the, the hybrid architecture and that approach and also the mindset of the customers as you just described it, I have seen over the last three, four months more, uh, more evidence of how that is becoming the predominant, you know, the, the, maybe the overwhelming outlook for how the cloud's gonna play out, right? you guys were standing out there alone for a while on this sort of hybrid thing. And it was something you were totally stuck with and other people either didn't get it or they weren't sure how to put the pieces together. But this just seems hybrid now seems to be the unquestioned approach to the future. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and Microsoft always believed in it. And um, as I said before, I think we're unique in the sense that um, we're the only uh, vendor that provides a consistent and comprehensive hybrid cloud. And, and so again, this allows customers to take advantage of their existing assets, skills, and really build applications that have latency um, or compliance needs. And what's unique about Microsoft is we do it across so many different facets. And that's why I mean comprehensive. So whether it's the developer experience where we give tools and, and platform capabilities with Azure and Azure Stack, or it's the data state, through SQL Server and Azure Data Services. Or identity, single sign-on is huge. So being able to have seamless sign-on with Active Directory or network connectivity, 
um, being able to connect from the data center to the cloud. We offer this fastest connection with ExpressRoute with uh, over 100 gigabits per second. And then management, whether customers are using System Center or they're using Azure Native Services like Azure Monitoring. And then security, we just launched Azure Sentinel, Bob. I'm sure you've, you've heard of it. Um, Azure Sentinel is a cloud native team. Again, works in a hybrid state. And in fact, it works in a multi-cloud state. And then we also have Azure Security Center. And then lastly, I do want to say this, while it's not product related, we also offer pretty incredible business benefits because we recognize that customers want to run software on premises and in the cloud. So we have something called Azure Hybrid Benefits. So if you're a Windows Server or a SQL Server customer with Software Assurance, you can actually get a ton of benefit by running it both on premises and the cloud. So some really good unique value that I believe Microsoft delivers and, and we've been delivering this for, for some time. And now a quick break to hear from our sponsor. SAP Experience Management is helping businesses connect to their customers and then connect customers back to those businesses. Just listening to your customers is not enough. Businesses need to respond, react, and relate to them as individuals. Each one of them has his or her own likes, dislikes, and preferences. By combining experience data with operational data, SAP can help your business turn customer insights into actions that make their experiences better. SAP Experience Management helps you turn customers into fanatics and products into obsessions. Learn more at sap.com slash xm. The best on SAP. Now back to the show. Harpen, what you were saying there about the, the hybrid cloud benefits and all, um, I, gosh, it's got to be close to a year ago, but I think Amy Hood was at an investor's conference and the, the, she kept getting questions about, well, you know, you're, you're, you're still showing some growth over here with SQL and the on-premise stuff. Aren't you concerned that's taken away from the cloud? And I think Renzo said, I really couldn't care less whether it comes from here or here because it's all driven by what the customer wants and needs. So Absolutely. your point about letting the customer pick the pace at which the move to the cloud happens is, is so important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've made it really easy for customers. So if you go into the Azure portal, um, you literally just check a checkbox and say, I have Azure hybrid benefits. And then you're able to take advantage of it um, without, you know, without doing anything else. And our, there's a related issue that as you were talking about uh, the dynamics of what's going on with customers today, becoming software companies, becoming technology companies, right. like, Sacha's note about, you know, uh, digital intensity. So right. um, I think that as good as Microsoft's technology gains have been in the cloud and all the different things, you know, the, the, the definite way that Azure can scale now to any sort of global workloads, but the things you're doing on the go-to-market side, like now where there are Microsoft customers who have become partners, right? Because they've developed software that they're now selling to other customers out there in the world. And Microsoft's ability to be what it needs to be to its customers is they move through this evolution themselves. I just think that's been a fascinating move. No, and it's, it's been great to see as well. To your point, um, we have always been focused on what, where customers are and what customers need. And our partner ecosystem um, can get enough of the training that we provide. So we are investing a lot in uh, learning and readiness with our existing partners. And we're finding a lot of new partners as well uh, that have started in the cloud. So we have a broad range of partners and one of the largest partner ecosystem, as you know, that are really interested in learning um, on, you know, whether it's migration or it's refactoring or it's building brand new cloud native apps. We provide a lot of training and readiness and there's been a huge demand for that. Yeah, and the, the notion of, um, you know, the, the traditional model, and again, it shows how fast this business is changing for a long time is Microsoft made the technology, its partners sold the technology to customers. And now it's in some cases, some of your partners, right, are making technology now around Azure that Microsoft sells. Uh, and, you know, for companies to have that nimbleness and that outside right. in orientation is, is, is quite unique. Yeah, no, it's, it's been great. And we, and to your point on go to market, um, we actually do some uh, really great things working closely with partners, whether it's building together with them or selling together with them. So we integrate in a very um, unique and close way with our partner ecosystem. And that's gotta be something too for your customers as well, Arpan, as they see a company of your size 
being nimble enough to make those changes and adapt to the new realities, maybe that gives those customers themselves some ideas about how their go-to-market plans are going to change because it, we're just seeing the, the, the market move uh, at a speed that, you know, unlike anything that's happened before. So that, that sense of partnership you described is important. And I, I wanted to ask Arpan too, how would you talk about at least, uh, you know, your specialty area on the infrastructure team? How do you measure the success of that business? The way we measure success is through customer success. And the way we look at that is something called Azure consumption. So that means is that if a customer is paying in advance for Azure, I don't look at that. I look at purely around what a customer is consuming. And so we're all motivated on making sure that customers are successful, that they're using the services to make sure they're getting business success. And so the way we look at the businesses is, is very different from, I would say years ago, where you know, people would look at licensing growth. So we really look at real consumption. And, and as I'm sure you know, uh, just last quarter, we had over 76% growth on Azure. So again, this reflects on how much cloud usage there is in the enterprise. And we're just really excited to see the momentum and, and work with our customers and partners on their journey to the cloud. Uh, our pardon, you know, please feel free to respond to this or not. I, I just think in some ways that 76% point you mentioned, I do think it's hilarious sometimes when some people say, yeah, but that, that, that growth rate is coming down. Like, well, okay, you know, geez, it's not 90 anymore, it's 76%. That's still a pretty nice growth rate, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, bigger numbers, right? And this point about hybrid that you've brought up, and I, what I think is so essential about that is, uh, all the big cloud companies, I think, have finally realized that no matter how great they think their stuff is, big companies and mid-sized companies around the world are going to move at their own pace. And as you pointed out early, there's going to be some of their traditional systems that they're going to keep for a long time to come. Right. So the hybrid is definitely the path and the way to go, the way that the world's moving forward. As it goes forward like that and as business models change, how is Microsoft's hybrid strategy evolving? Yeah, and, and I, think, I think you said it right, like hybrid is durable. And as I said before, we're committed to delivering a consistent and comprehensive platform. What we're seeing is that while hybrid today in many customers' eyes is the interconnectivity between the data center and the cloud, we're seeing a new pattern emerge, which is very similar to hybrid in many ways. Um, and I'm sure you've heard of it as well. It's, it's edge computing. And so there is this, very interesting wave of uh, applications being built where customers are looking to develop new apps that are closer to the edge. So whether that's being closer to the, where the data is, where the users are. And, and we're seeing some amazing applications being built and they have, they have striking similarities with a hybrid model, right? Like in terms of how the applications are built. So we're looking to extend the same hybrid principles of consistency and comprehensiveness to the edge. So for example, we just, released the, we just announced the general availability of Databox Edge. And so Databox Edge is an AI enabled edge computing appliance where we're seeing customers across various industries look at how they can actually bring kind of AI to the edge and storage to the edge. And so some really interesting things and, and there's a great customer example on Cree that I encourage people to read about um, on our website. The other example is Azure Stack. Um, Azure Stack, uh, we're seeing customers use Azure Stack in their data center to enable native cloud development and applications on, on premises. But we're also seeing Azure Stack at the edge, whether it's an oil rig or retail floor. We're seeing really great applications being developed. And Azure Stack allows cloud capabilities to be closer to those applications. And of course, you can't talk about edge without IoT. And with Azure IoT, we're seeing um, some fantastic use cases. So Starbucks, for example, is using, is using Azure Sphere to connect a lot of their equipment with their employees to have better engagement with customers. So some fantastic examples. And what's really great is that we're, learn, we're taking everything we've learned from hybrid and applying it to the edge and ensuring there's a really great, consistent, comprehensive experience so customers can continue using the same skill sets and app patterns that they're, that they're used to today. Well, that, that sort of approach has to be sort of music to the ears of customers, right? Because, you know, over the last, uh, well, until the last handful of years, 
generally what the tech industry did was say, we're going to sell to customers a lot of different stuff, or the customers are going to buy a lot of different stuff. And then it's on the customer to integrate that all together. And some of these pieces were just never intended for that. So I think up the key point of what you just said, there was thematically or strategically, logically, there's, there's patterns here that are emerging where you're using that hybrid model as almost like a proxy for how you'll develop other things. So there's a predictability in it, right? For then the customers to follow and be prepared right. for it. And, and yeah, and that what that means is that our engineering teams are using the same um, understanding to design these platforms and also make sure that there's also connectivity between all of it from all the way from your data center to the edge. So some really great things that we're seeing in the industry and we're applying them to our products. Okay. So last couple of things I wanted to ask you about with competition. So, you know, I, I, I get what you're saying. There's been such a strong um, statement positioning from Microsoft for a number of years about hybrid. Yet now, if you talk to AWS, if you talk to Google, they say, well, we've got the same thing, you know, and we've got, uh, I think, as Satya had said recently, one of the reasons for Microsoft's success, he said, is we just have more of what customers need and what they need to apply as they move through this digital transformation. But now, you know, AWS and Google are saying the same thing. So if I'm a customer trying to pick which one do I go to and everybody's at the high level saying the same sort of thing, what is the key within Microsoft strategy that unlocks, you know, a special interest on the part of a customer? Yeah, you know, I, I think about three different things, three broad areas that I feel like were unique. One is what I call the trusted partnership. Um, I mentioned this before, and I think it's really important to really think about the mission that Microsoft is, which is really to empower organizations around the world. And so we're committed to helping customers um, build great businesses, build great products, to build great services. And we've had decades of experience working and understanding what enterprises really need. So some examples uh, on the technology side that I feel like we're uniquely differentiated are security and hybrid. So we talked about hybrid, um, that we are the only ones with consistent and comprehensive. Some uh, are competition, which is great. And it's, I think it, um, it just validates what we've been saying. They are trying to do hybrid technology, but a lot of them don't have it today. So some of it is more roadmap. And in cases where they have some, it's not comprehensive. So it's, it's, it's a slice of it. And so I do think we're unique in the hybrid. On security, Microsoft invests over a billion dollars a year. And we have over 3,500 people that that entire day job is actually security. So we process trillions of signals across a number of different vectors. And then we use those to make sure that our platform is secure. And we actually give a lot of those services back to customers. So whether that's Azure Sentinel, which is the first real cloud native seam, or it's the Azure Security Center, I feel like we're really differentiated there. So that's the first kind of pillar, which I call trusted partnership. Yeah. This, this, the second one is really just about transformative innovation. And that is innovation across every vector. So whether it's Office and Microsoft 365, really building amazing solutions on every endpoint, or whether it's cloud services, Dynamics, Azure, um, powered by the Microsoft Graph, which by the way is one of the biggest intelligent graphs, which gets signals from Big, LinkedIn, Office 365, and Windows 10. Or if it's AI, the amount of energy and the amount of investment we're making in AI, in our apps, in our cloud, in on-premises, it's just a big investment area for us and we deliver it in so many different ways, more than anyone else out there. And I'd say the third area is just the fact that we have the most comprehensive cloud. So we're investing and we wanna lead in IaaS, in PaaS, and in SaaS. So whether it's Office 365, Azure Dynamics, we have the most comprehensive set of solutions. And for customers, that means that they can get really great integrated experiences. So we talked about single sign-on, just having Active Directory integration or connectivity across these applications or compliance boundary across these applications or latency. If you have an application that's built across Office 365, um, Dynamics and Azure, they're all kind of built in the same location. So these are just some examples 
of how I think Microsoft is unique. And, um, and so, no, I'm, I'm really, really excited to work with customers. And I know my day job is Azure, but in every conversation I have with customers, they want to learn about the cloud at large. Arpan, now you've mentioned the company's desire to be, you know, a leader in both infrastructure and platform and in SaaS, right? So from a customer's point of view, what's the advantage of dealing with a cloud vendor who plays across all of those three areas? Um, I think there are, there are several advantages. Um, one is just in terms of having um, a single uh, vendor relationship in some ways. And so being able to call Microsoft if you have any problems around IaaS, PaaS, or SaaS, that's one. I think on the technology stack, there's a lot of interconnectivity that's built. So um, Active Directory is just one good example of single sign-on. Uh, network connectivity is another one that if you have um, a data center and you're connecting to Microsoft's cloud, you can actually have an express route connection and get a faster connection to uh, Office 365 in Azure, for example. And then of course, there are things like compliance. So you're in the same compliance certifications, for example. And then of course, we do a lot of work to make sure we create connected experiences across all three. So whether that's a uh, power apps or that's workflow integration or what have you, there's a lot of great applications that we've built as well as applications that partners have built that actually integrate across our IaaS has and SaaS offerings. So I think there's a lot of great benefit that customers get uh, when using, using Microsoft. Arpan, as we close up, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, Bob, um, I just have to say it's great to be um, in the industry at this point, and it's great to be able to work with customers uh, through their digital transformation. And um, I just wanna say that Microsoft's committed to helping customers and helping them through this journey, uh, through technology, through people, and through processes, and uh, just look forward to this multi-multi-year journey for all our customers. Well, great, Arpan, and I think on that point, you know, if you look at the roster of customers that Microsoft has recently publicly disclosed some incredibly deep and transformative relationships with, you know, the many of the biggest companies in the world. So, yeah, clearly they've got some very good reasons for picking you folks, and it, it's been a pleasure hearing more about Microsoft cloud strategy and what's going on with customers and. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us. Thank you, Bob. Thanks a lot. I also want to thank all of you folks in the audience for tuning in here to Cloud Wars Live. Thanks very much for being with us. Please share your feedback with me at bobevanspa at gmail.com. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Cloud Wars Live.